Hey guys, Malcolm here, Survival Know How. Real quick, I want you to tell me how many countries in the world you think have access to nuclear warheads that we know about anyway. The nuclear warheads, how many countries in this world have access to them? Okay, real quick, throw out a number. Give you five seconds to think about it. Five, four, three, two, one. So the answer is nine countries that we know about in the world have access to nuclear warheads and they have openly admitted that they have them, right? And that number surprises a lot of people. Uh, so let's see, we got uh, America, of course, and we got Russia, everybody knows about that. We know about the Cold War, but we also have China, we have India, we have uh, United Kingdom, we have France, we have Pakistan, we have Israel, and we have North Korea. I think that's nine. So obviously on that list, people who have to worry about the most is North Korea. Uh, you just have to look at Kim Jong-un's haircut and you just know uh, that guy ain't right in the head. All right, so let's say a terrorist organization steals or even buys a nuclear warhead from one of these countries. What would be the most devastating thing that they could do with that, right? Now you might be thinking, well, you know, they could take out Washington DC or New York City, you know, or Los Angeles but you would actually be wrong in thinking that. Like sure, they could level one entire city, but the most devastating thing that they could do is to fly that nuclear warhead above one of these cities and detonate it in the air. If they do that, that will release a gigantic EMP that would fry all electronic devices uh, almost on the entire east coast of America. Okay, so that would probably cover Washington DC as all the way up to Philadelphia, all the way up to New York City, New Jersey. All electronics are done for, right? No cars will work, no, the power grid will not work, all communication devices will not work, no electricity whatsoever. And that will practically be a death sentence to millions of Americans and will cripple America far more than simply taking out one city. I worry about this stuff, man. This stuff gets inside my head sometimes. But I feel like Battle Box are on the same wavelength as me. That is why this month's box is all about preparing for an EMP attack. Stay tuned. If you're looking for a good book that'll scare the crap out of you about EMPs, there's a book called One Second After that I cannot recommend enough. It's a fantastic book. I've read it a couple times now. But it's about a father in North Carolina and suddenly there's a large flash in the sky and then all the electronics stop working in this small town uh, and there's an EMP attack and there's no communication. He doesn't know what's going on. And it's about him trying to save his family and survive. And it's not just him versus the elements, but there's just a huge influx of refugees from the larger cities like Washington DC we're all leaving the larger cities uh, looking for food. Fantastic book, I really recommend it. One second after, go go get the uh, the Audible version of that, man. All right, let's finally get started here, guys. I'm sorry, I get distracted sometimes. All right, Battle Box, mission 14, the sit rep is EMP attack, and the very first thing is the Luminade Pack Light 16 Solar Light. So if you guys haven't heard of Luminade, they are a solar powered, omnidirectional LED lantern that have an inflatable body, okay? So very lightweight, very small. All right, so when you inflate it, it sort of looks like an inflatable pillow. It may seem kind of silly, but this actually helps diffuse the light and scatter the light uh, in an omnidirectional pattern, so all over the place. And this thing actually, it charges really quickly. Like I literally just took this out of the box and already, you know, it, it has enough charge to uh, light up. So this is the Pack Light 16, and it's actually got the Battle Box logo on there, which is very cool. I've actually already have a Luminade. I have the smaller version, and I keep this inside my blackout bag. This is, this is great for when you have um, a power outage. So it has a couple of different settings on there. Inside, you have two LEDs, so you can light both of them. I uh, give you a lot of light, light one of them, a little bit of light, and it also has, uh, I think, kind of like a strobe effect, right? 
has a handle here. You've got a couple of holes if you want to lash this to the outside of your bag. This company, Luminade, uh, I actually saw them on Shark Tank before. So they are a fairly new company, you know, last couple of years. This is a pretty new product out in the market. So this box is uh, geared towards an EMP attack, but this is also great for camping, right? Just how small and compact this is. So this is great. I am super happy with my small Luminade light. So I am going to be really happy with this, I'm sure. And I will be adding this to my blackout bag uh, as well. All right, next up we have a 115 hour emergency candle. Also with the Battle Box logo on that. Look at that, man. They're really, they're, they're getting big enough now that they can start branding their products, which is pretty cool. So this is liquid paraffin, uh, emergency lighting, 115 hours, odorless and smokeless. You take the top off and you have a little wick right there. Let's pretend it's the worst case scenario. Let's see if I can do this with my fire starter. So I pulled the wick out a little bit to help me get us started, and that might be why there's such a big flame. But 115 hours, which is fantastic. Um, that will get you through, you know, several blackouts due to, uh, let's say, a bad swarm or something. All right, so next up we have a book. This is Living Off the Grid by Dave Black. So let me go through a couple of these chapter titles. Living Off the Grid, what it is, what it isn't. Conservation, living off the grid shelter, energy, water, waste, free rides, and piggybacking off the grid, communication and making and living off the grid, living the life, case studies, off the grid venues, comparison. So it looks like this is uh, everything that you need to know to get shelter, energy, water, food, all that in a long-term blackout situation, which is entirely possible with a really bad EMP attack. All right, so living off the grid by Dave Black. So next up, we have something I am very excited about, and that is a Faraday bag. This bag will protect whatever's inside from electricity uh, or an electromagnetic pulse. So what you really want to do is put like a GPS unit in here, maybe a backup cell phone, maybe a radio, something like that inside this bag to protect it in the worst case scenario. I've also always heard that you can use these old ammo containers as well. If you stick a radio or a GPS unit or, you know, a cell phone, a flashlight, something like that inside here, in the case of an EMP attack, that the uh, electricity will not penetrate uh, the metal case of this, right? It'll hit here and just kind of go around the case. So that's just one option if you're on a budget or if you already have some of these ammo containers laying around. So if you have any radios or anything like that in your bug out bag or just in your home blackout bag, you know, this is a great place to store them. This is kind of an interesting um, lid here. It just kind of folds up. It's got some Velcro like, like that. And that should keep everything inside uh, this bag safe from an EMP attack. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little confused as to why they would give us a specific EMP bag and then also give us a bunch of these all our Mylar bags when they do the same thing. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe this is supposed to work more effectively than these Mylar bags. Maybe you guys could tell me down in the comments section below. But we have a bunch of these Mylar bags so you can protect whatever you have. If you have a computer that you wanted to protect, um, if you had multiple radios that you want to protect, uh, you know, whatever electronic devices you have, stick them in these things and supposedly the Mylar bag will protect them from uh, an EMP attack. So one way that I know that you can test out how effective uh, some of this equipment works to protecting against an EMP attack is one, you can stick a cell phone in there and you can try calling the cell phone, right? And supposedly the bag or the uh, ammo case should stop those frequencies from entering there and you should not be able to hear your cell phone. Uh, they should also stop, you know, Wi-Fi signals. They should stop um, radio signals. So if you turn a radio on and then stick it in one of these bags, supposedly it should stop the signal from coming through. If you have your phone with a Wi-Fi on and you're streaming music, you stick in one of these bags or containers, it should supposedly stop that frequency range from entering the bag and stop the, the signal. So you should hear the music stop playing. So just kind of something to keep in mind, you know, if you wanted to test some of this equipment out for yourself. So that's everything in the basic box. Let's recap. We have a bunch of these Mylar bags, right? Small, medium, and large. And these are supposed to help protect your gear from an EMP attack. Then we also have a 
bag that's specifically designed to protect your gear from an EMP attack. That's little, this little guy. We have a book all about living off the grid for after the EMP attack. This is kind of a long-term uh, living off the grid situation. We have a 115 hour emergency candle by BattleBox. Uh, very cool, this works pretty well. And then we have my favorite item, which is this giant Luminade um, solar LED omnidirectional light. Also brand new battle box. Uh, I'm very excited about this. I told you that was before, I really like Luminate. I like this little one I got. I'm pretty sure I'll be happy with this big guy. So I'll have links to as many of these items as I can down in the description below. All right, so moving on to the advanced box. The first item we get is this hybrid solar light. So this looks like an awesome product. It says that it can recharge with any source of light, which is great, like the lights in here. It can hold up to an eight hour charge, which is awesome. And it'll hold the charge for years, which is very, uh, very interesting. So it says it'll hold a charge for years. And I am very interested in testing that out because most of the um, solar charged uh, light sources that I have, they don't do that, right? Uh, a lot of them, when I take them out of the blackout bag to use them, I have to charge them before I can use them. You know, even this Luminate, you know, I take it out of the bag it hasn't seen sunlight in a month. You know, the battery's dead on it, obviously. So I'm very interested to see if this does in fact hold a charge for years like it claims. But as soon as I take it out, it's already got a, a pretty bright light, which is great. You know, it's only been out of the box for a few minutes now. So it says that this is waterproof and you can actually submerge this in water uh, and it will actually float in the water as well. It has a lot of rubber grips on it um, and it feels very, very durable in your hand. And actually it has a plastic shield right here that will protect the actual solar panels on it that it uses to charge. This is not just a solar light, this actually comes with two batteries. So you can either use this, the solar charger, or it will run on these two batteries. And that is actually a phenomenal idea. That is excellent. And that way, when you first pull it out, it'll automatically work. You don't have to worry about pulling it out and then charging it for several hours, and then you can use it. You pull it out, you can start using it instantaneously. So that's where it gets the hybrid in the hybrid light name. Very cool. All right, so next up we have a Wonky Talkie by Bofeng. I don't know how to pronounce that. B-A-O-F-E-N-G, Bofeng, Bofeng. Let's just open it up, huh? Dual band FM transceiver. One, seven, one, six, one, five, one, four. Keep making love to each other. And I'm trying, 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 but I can't keep my hands to myself. Dude, that is awesome. So it's an FM radio, obviously, but it is a transmitter as well, right? So a little walkie talkie, so you can monitor certain frequencies. Um, if you wanted to, you could probably listen to like a police frequency, emergency firefighter frequency. Uh, that is cool. If you got multiple ones of these, then you can talk to your buddies. Very cool. I love that it's got this charging dock here. So this radio puts out four watts. Um, so I'm in the Air Force and I actually work on radios and we have, uh, I work on a lot of radios for the Secret Service and their radios that they carry around with them are a little bit bigger than this and they put out five watts. So four watts, you know, that's right there. That's, that's pretty common. Um, but you got to think of it as kind of a bubble and four watts, you're not going to be able to transmit very far. A lot of the big radio stations, uh, you know, they might put out hundred watts, 200, 250 watts, and that just allows their bubble that they can communicate with to be huge. So you could probably receive, uh, a large transmit like that from emergency broadcasting station. Just don't, don't expect to be able to communicate back with them with only four watts, unless you're, you're pretty close to them or you have a direct line of sight. But very cool, man, this is awesome. I am gonna have fun playing around with this. It looks like it even has a little LED to use as a emergency flashlight. Very cool, you can, you can adjust your transmit and your receive frequency here. One, six, one, five. Dude, this thing is high tech. But if you get one of these and you're playing around with it, uh, you just gotta kind of be careful what frequencies you use. You know, you don't, like I said, you, you don't wanna be on uh, uh, transmitting on a frequency that the firefighters use or the police use. 
or any local uh, government agency use, you know, that wouldn't be good. Dude, that is awesome, man. Way to go, BattleBox. I'm super excited about this, and I will definitely be storing this inside my Faraday bag. So that is it for the advanced box. So we have your ham radio. This uh, is a dual band FM transceiver. It comes with a little charger, everything you need. Very cool, I'm super excited to play with this and bring this along with me in my next camp out. And then you have this uh, hybrid uh, solar slash battery flashlight, which is awesome. Uh, and I'm very excited about this as well because I have solar lights. I don't have any that have batteries in there as a backup also. Uh, and this thing feels very durable and very rugged. Uh, so very cool. All right, so next up we have the Voyager Emergency Radio by Catio. Uh, very cool. If you watch any of my other videos about bug out bags, you know I've already got one of these things uh, very similar to this and I love it. Wow, this thing is a lot larger than the one I have. Um, this one's probably not ideal for camping. This is the kind of thing that you want to leave in your own home. So it has these solar panels right here for charging and you can actually adjust these, which is awesome. Mine does not have that feature. Wow, it's got a whole bank of LED lights up here. It's got a crank handle here for charging it. What I like is that it already has presets here, right? So it says weather band, and it has several uh, frequencies already programmed into it that are, I guess, are commonly used for weather alerts. You have AM, FM, SW1, SW2. Not sure what those are, and then you have a, a weather one here. So the back opens up here, and you have uh, slots for AA batteries. And you can also see that it has like a lithium ion battery here that you, you use, which is probably the rechargeable battery. So on the front here, you can actually choose uh, to run off of your batteries, or to run off of your rechargeable batteries from the solar panel or the crank which is uh, an awesome feature, right? That's very similar to this flashlight where you can choose to run off the solar panels or the batteries in the back here. So uh, let's run off the batteries. This afternoon, sunny. Highs in the so I'm set to the weather band here, and you can choose a different weather band, and hopefully one of them works in your region. Monday night, clear. And then you can also go to AM, FM, and listen no to your local station. Okay, 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 okay. So what I think is awesome, it has this row of LED lights on the back, which I have never seen before. And that's on the back of the uh, adjustable solar panel. Then it also has a little SOS light right here. And then you can light up uh, the space right here now, and it gives you a flashlight. So in the back here, it has uh, several USB ports, right? So you can actually charge your cell phone using this off of these solar chargers. So it says here that a uh, cell phone charger, MP3 charger, LED flashlight, five LED reading lamp, a USB jack, built-in speakers, headphone jack, an iPod charger. So just a bunch of features crammed into this, this radio. So just as kind of a size comparison, this is the little radio that I carry along with me uh, in my bug out bag. It has solar charger here as well as a crank in the back. It also has a, a USB port. And this is uh, the one that we got. So this is obviously a lot larger. It has a few more bells and whistles. This takes AAA batteries, mine does not. It only has a rechargeable battery. So for me personally, I'll probably be leaving this in my blackout bag, leave this in my bug out bag, because uh, th there is quite a, a big difference in size there. But this is an awesome product. This is great for if you have a power outage due to a hurricane or tornado or just a bad storm. Uh, if you guys don't have a crank radio like this for emergency situations, I, I highly recommend it. It should be one of your first items that you get uh, when building your, your power outage or blackout bag. So the next item we have in the advanced bag is the hybrid expandable 75 lumen solar light slash charger. So let's open this up and see what this is all about. Yeah, there we go. So it screws out. Ah, I see how that works. But look at that. It's a omnidirectional LED lantern. So this is very similar to the uh, Luminate pillows, right? It, a small LED light, and then this clear plastic diffuses the light and scatters it in all directions. 
Uh, here are the here is the uh, solar panels on top, and here is the USB port on top that you can use to charge your cell phone or any other device using the little solar panel up here. So there's two different brightness settings, a uh, low and high. Has a hook on top here uh, that you can use to hang in your tent or off your bag or in a tree, whatever you want. It'll you can compact it back down and it'll turn into from an omnidirectional scattering light everywhere into a directional light. So you can use this as a flashlight. Pretty neat. So no surprise, this is the same company that gave us the uh, hybrid flashlight as well. So just like the hybrid flashlight, this little guy gives you eight hours of light off one full charge. It'll hold a charge for years. It can be recharged with any light source. It is water resistant, extremely durable, and it's a super bright LED. So I gotta say, this is a very creative uh, and innovative design that they have here. I love that you have the uh, directional light and then you can open it up and I'll turn it into a lantern which you can then hang inside your, your campsite. So that is it for the advanced box. We have the second hybrid uh, solar powered LED light and then we have this behemoth of a emergency radio. So both of these items are great for any sort of power outage, but if you want to protect yourself from an EMP attack, don't forget to store these inside your Mylar bags. On to the final item in the battle box. This is the Pro Plus or the Knife of the Month box. And we have a knife by Clucker Knives. We have seen them before the battle boxes. We have a little pocket knife. All right, so we have the Cordovan Light by Clucker Knives. So the body is stainless steel, and then it has these brass rivets on it, which is really neat. They, they just kind of pop. It gives it kind of a steampunk vibe. Uh, and then it's got some sort of, it sort of looks like fake wood in there. Very nice, very pretty knife. Uh, the, what's most notable about this is this interesting locking mechanism that they have. So the handle itself is sort of carved uh, to look like a spring, and you press down here and it allows you to release the blade. It's a pretty unique um, locking mechanism. I've never seen that before. Wow, I just cut myself from doing that. I mean, just a little bit, but geez, it's a sharp blade. So I, I gotta say, I'm not that thrilled that uh, you have to flick your wrist to open it up with one hand, right? Uh, you really just can't do it using this lever. You have to really flick it like that. And I just feel like I'm just not gonna be paying attention. I'm gonna be holding some rope, doing something, and not paying attention, and it's, it's gonna get stuck like that very often because I'm gonna forget that you gotta flick your wrist. I, I like knives that you can kind of slowly and methodically open them up, just like that really slow control. You know, that way you can just kind of take your time. You don't even have to look at it. But I, I don't know, I'm just kind of bummed out that with this guy, it you have to, it's kind of a, a two motion ordeal to open it up. You gotta open it and then flick it. But I will say this is a very beautiful knife. Uh, I love the brass riveting and embellishments there like that. Looks great against this kind of dark stainless steel body and this faux uh, wood up here. And I love this unique design of this locking mechanism. Um, you know, I've never really seen a design quite like that. But it's made by Klecker Knives and they have a very solid reputation of being a very high quality knife. Uh, and it is a very beautiful design. All right, so that is the Klecker Cordova Light, uh, and this is a $95 knife. So that is everything in the Mission 14 Battle Box. So in total, this month's box is $383 worth of value, right? That is the market retail price of all these items together. To get your own Battle Box, uh, it has different tiers to get everything. The Pro Plus is $150 a month. So you get a lot of value with these Battle Boxes. If you guys are interested in your own battle box, go check them out, battlebox.com. Can't say enough good things about them. They've always got the highest quality items in their boxes. Even though it's a little bit of a premium price, $150 a month, uh, you always get like at least double your value with all these items in here. And it's just, it's just a lot of fun getting all this gear. You know, and now I get to spend a whole month kind of field testing and trying out this different gear. So check them out, battlebox.com. If you guys enjoyed this video, you know, let me know down in the comment section below and hit that like button. That helps me out tremendously. Until next time, guys, remember, knowledge weighs nothing. So long.